Let's bring in former National Advisor to Vice President Pence and former NSC Chief of Staff General Keith Kellogg. General, good to see you. Uh, 18 months, General, we went without a combat death in Afghanistan. Yeah. Granted, the previous administration started the talks with the Taliban. They, they said they were going to leave, but with 2,500 troops and with Bagram Air, Air Base, we seem to have things under control. Just your general thoughts about how it devolved so quickly. Yeah, well, first of all, David, thanks for having me. Look, Thank the you. first thing I'd like to say is uh, our, the condolences to the Marines and the corpsmen that we lost today. You know, Americans ought to get out on their knees at night and thank God that we have men and women that are willing to go forward and serve Amen. like they're serving us uh, and they're, they're heroes. Look, this thing is obviously now we're in a binary situation. And just let me tell you what I'd, if I was recommending something to the president, the vice president, you walk in the door and say, look, you've got two options, Mr. President. One of the options is you continue what you're doing right now and you leave. You collapse the airhead and get out by 31 uh, August. The other option, the option I'd recommend is you go in to the president and you say, as commander in chief, you pick up the phone and you call the political advisor to the Taliban, Mullah Bararder. He's got to be on speed dial because your director of the CIA talked to him last week and you say to him, look, that 31 August deadline is gone. We're going to stay in place till we get every single American out of Afghanistan that needs to get out of there and the allies that we have with them and pull them out and make it very clear to them, we're not going to, this isn't an, a request of you. This is what we're telling right. you what we're going to do because that's the primary thing we need but to do. But General, is get forgive the me for interrupting, but we but this, just, we just sir, had the, the head of CENCOM, uh, General McKenzie, come on and give a report. He, right. he said we have to evaluate our procedures but continue with the mission. What you're saying is we have to redefine the mission. Yeah, David, that's what I would do. If I was recommending courses of action to the president, the vice president, I would have walked in and said, that's what we need to do. The situation has changed on the ground. To me, that was, and I know Ken McKenzie very well, that was a very sterile briefing. I mean, you, what yeah. you basically say, a little bit of emotion to it. You're not going to do this to Americans. This has got, David, international ramifications now. Everybody is watching what President Biden is going to do. I am talking about friends, the Brits and the French, and the enemies that we face out there, from the Russians to the Chinese. Everybody is now taking the measure of the man. And look, our great men and women in uniform that are there in Bagram, I'm sorry, I wish it was Bagram, at, at Karzai International Airport, they understand risk. They know the risks out there, but they know what their job is, and that's to get Americans out of there. And regardless of what it takes, they will do that if they're told to do that, and they should be given those directions. Yeah, General, I, I want to share with you another soundbite from General McKenzie. We, we don't want to... Yeah to pile up here, but uh, he said something that a lot of people found very disturbing about our cooperation with the Taliban, and I, I have no problem calling them terrorists. Whether they were actually behind the attacks today is another question we'll get to, but let me just play that sound bite from the general and get your reaction. Roll tape. We cut down the information we give the Taliban. They don't get the full range of information we have, but we give them enough to act in time and space to try to prevent these attacks. So we share a common purpose. To the, as, as long as we've kept that common pur purpose uh, aligned, they've been they've been uh, useful to work with. Are you comfortable with that, General, with the fact that we are giving them sensitive intel right now, the Taliban? Yeah, I, I, it's bothersome to me that we would do that. I think that, that it's a question of do you trust them, and the answer is no. Absolutely I not. Trust I, I, even the president has said he doesn't and, trust them. Yeah. Well, and the second part of that, it's a very loose organization. It's like a federation or a confederation of forces. There is no command and control like we understand in the U.S. military. It's just not. There's not a good line diagram. And when you look at the forces out there, it's really kind of a, a ragtag group. And I'm not too sure there's any coordination they can provide. So I don't know who we're talking to, and I don't know how the command and coordination works among them. Yeah. So you've got to start at the top level. You got to start with with their senior leadership and tell them, look, this is what we're going to do, and and we're not asking you, we're telling you what we're doing, and we need to push the perimeter out, get the Americans out, and collapse it when we decide to collapse it now, and when we feel comfortable that we've got the job done. Now, Pre President Biden's aides and and the Taliban were speaking alike and saying that that there's a kind of civil war between the Taliban and ISIS K and a number of other. 
uh, terrorist groups. Uh, there may be infighting and so forth, but do you buy that? Because some people have gone so far as to suggest this could have been a false flag uh, attack. That is to say that, that perhaps the Taliban uh, wanted to speed up the departure of Americans and they might have been behind the attack. Do you, do you have any thoughts in that regard? Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, David, I wouldn't speculate. I do know that the ISIS-K and the Taliban, they don't like each other at all. But the, but the fact of the matter is both of them don't like us. So, you know, it, it's sort of like a combined effort. We're getting hit with the, the left hand or the right hand. So right. I don't trust either group. We, the only people I trust are those great American men and women we've got on the line there uh, at Karzai International Airport. And they'll get the job done, but we've got to get it done right. And I think having a date certain, 31 August, we should just say, tell them, nope, it's going to be done when we're done. But, General, I, I, you're, you're talking to the father of a Marine here who uh, spent a year in Afghanistan, yeah. and, and he's still in the Marine Corps. And, and I share, I think, the nervousness of a lot of families, of Marines, of sailors, of corpsmen, yeah. of, of, of all kinds of service people yeah. that are now in much greater harm's way than they were several weeks ago. Uh, we wonder whether this commander-in-chief is up to the job, frankly, is up to the job. He, he countermanded, apparently, the opinion of a lot of his chief military advisors in, in pulling out of Bagram uh, prematurely, as a lot of people now recognize it was. And we wonder whether he's capable of leading our children. Uh, what would you tell military yeah. families like mine? Well, first of all, Please pass on our, everybody's thanks for your son's service. Look, my daughter served in Afghanistan. My son served in Afghanistan. My son-in-law served in Afghanistan. I understand it, and I understand the concerns they always have when they go there. I think the entire world tonight is going to watch what is going to happen at 5 p.m., and they're going to find out the will of the American president. What is he going to do, and how does that impact uh, international ramifications and does he have the back of the young men and women that we have out there look everybody and you know this from your son the military members understand risk they yes, accept absolutely risk. they know the dangers but it's got to be a good mission solid mission and they need to know that the commander-in-chief has their back well you mentioned a couple of solid missions and we've, we've run out of time but I just want to mention one the retaking of Bagram Airport everybody's saying that if that could yeah. be resecured, if we could take that back from the Taliban, that would be a much better staging ground than what we have in Kabul right now. Is, is it too late for that? Yeah, honestly, David, I think it is. I think we have to do, we have to work with what we have in hand. And you can push the perimeter out from Karzai International Airport. It would be almost, you could, could you do it? Of course you could do it. The American military could do anything they're told to do out there. But I think right now, if the intent is to get the Americans out of Afghanistan, they can handle that from Karzai Airport, International Airport, but they're, they're going to have to be given the mission to go out there and, and get those Americans, get those Americans to the airport and any of the Afghans that want to go with us. Right now, it, going to, they should have never given Bagram up, but they did, and I think they can handle the mission with, with uh, the location they're at right now. General Kellogg, it's good to hear your calm voice. Uh, you, you offer very tough missions, but at the same time, you do so in a, in a manner that, uh, that gives us all a little calm, and we need it now. And, and again, uh, God bless those service people who died today. Uh, God bless the Afghans who died as well. There was a lot of death, too much of it going on in a place that had been relatively peaceful, dis despite the location and the dangerousness of that nation. Uh, appreciate you being here, General. Thank you again. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.